Hey there everybody, this is TJ with Shopbot Tools and for today's training we're going to look at temporary zeroing. This is something that you'll use when you're not using the default bottom left corner. So let's look at a couple examples here. So an example you may do is something like this log slab which is an irregular shape. Uh, again, these log slabs have all kinds of different irregular shapes so the bottom left default zeros aren't going to be useful. So this is what we'll get up in setting up a temporary zero. And there's a couple different ways of doing this and we'll look at how to set it up in both the Vectric software and how to change some settings in your ShopBot software. But yeah, a lot of times the bottom left corner of the ShopBot isn't used. You're placing jigs or fixtures or your materials in different parts of the table. Sometimes your shop may look a little bit like my garage where it becomes a storage area for everything else and you're forced to use other sides of the table. So here is an example on a four foot by eight foot machine where you're actually using the back distance. So we're going to look at now how to set this stuff up and again using temporary zeroing and resetting it back when you're done for cutting out different projects. So for this first example I want to show you how we set up the CAD file and then we'll look at how we're set up it out on the shop bot. So this is really nothing fancy here. It's just a five by five block. We're going to cut out a V-carve of a rhinoceros it's got a, and then a circular cut. And to get it perfectly centered in the material, this one here, I decided to change the XY datum position instead of the bottom left corner that we are all used to using. This one I'm actually just centering in the material. So uh, when I change it in the software to the center of the material, you best change it as well out on the machine. So let's look at that. We'll hit OK. This is where we would go through, do our tool pathing. And now let's look at the machine and where the XY00 is on that. All right, for this first example, we're going to go ahead and zero out our proximity switches using the C3 command or the icon in your control software. We do want to have our default 00 location in place. We are going to create a temporary zero, but it will be based off those zero zero coordinates. So you can see I put the block down and I have the I put it with a sharpie and the X so you can see the center. I did put an X down there so I do know where my bottom left corner is of that block. And now what I'm going to do is go into keypad mode, which is the K is your shortcut key. And I'm going to actually use these arrow keys and I'm going to move it to a position. So you can see the position menu over on the right. And here it is with the arrow keys moving back and forth. Now you can get it pretty close doing it like this. But one more thing you want to do is go back into fix mode. And then you can really dial that in with the keypad. So keypad and now fixed mode. And that's just a little fix button. And you see here I'll put in a couple different settings so you can see every time that, like here's a quarter of an inch, if I put that in and then I go to hit my in direction with my arrows, it moves exactly a quarter of an inch. So what I'm going to do now is change that tolerance back to 0.01 and then I'm going to dial in my back and forth. And then here's the key, once you dial that in to back and forth and get it exactly of the center of your bit over the center of your material right where you want that is where you're going to zero out and make your temporary zero and what I would recommend all of you do when you get it exactly where you want it up here this position where it says your X and your Y and your Z when you get it exactly where you want it I would write down on a piece of paper or I actually write it right on the spoil board so I don't lose it your X and your Y coordinates and the reason for that is if you ever had to shut the machine off or you lost power or you had to come back to it later on, since we C3'd it, zeroed our X and Y earlier, you could always type in these commands up here to go back to this if you needed to come back. Now again, that's just worst case scenario. Hopefully you won't have to do it. You'll just set up your temporary zero, run your file, and run and go. But I'm just saying this as a caution. It might also be good once you get it set up the way you want it to also write down these these numbers right here. So you can see here I used the fix mode to finish this up. Out here on the shop bot, you can see that the 0.01 increment is really nice for dialing this in. Again, I'm going to get it exactly where I want it. And before I zero out the axes, I'm going to write down those three measurements. 
And if you're going to do your Z right there too, uh, it's really nice. You don't have to use a Z zero plate. You can just use a piece of paper and wiggle it until it touches. And then you've also zeroed your Z in that case. So back here, uh, I can go to underneath zero and zero whatever axis, or I can bring up the keypad. Remember, write down that position right now that you're in. Before you click on these X, Y, and Z and you hit zero, this measurement right here is the distance from the bottom left corner. So uh, what we're going to do right now is temporarily change these to zero, zero. But they're nice to have written down just in case you ever had to get back to that spot. And our X, our Y, and our Z, and notice that the position menu is going to go to all zero zeros when we hit that. So we've now successfully created a zero zero for that setup. And then after you made your cut, uh, zero out your axes, and this will go back to the default proximity switches. So you use your temporary zero, and you only change settings in the ShopBot 3 software in this example. And then bang, we're right back to our bottom left corner after that cut. For this next example, I'm actually going to change the zeroing here in the Vector CAD software. So this is what we're looking at here. This is a jig that I use at different competitions for the Skills USA cabinet making. What's nice about this little jig is the students bring over their board and it just uses a wedge system to hold it tight, which these two up here push it down along this fence, and then the one here on the right pushes it up tight. And I used, again, I'm back to the bottom left corner for default. But let's look at how the jig was set up, and then we'll look at how do they set up the board for cutting when they design their file. So back here, looking at this jig, you can see that the, that the jig is actually pocketed out here in the middle, and this is where the board would sit. And... You know, here's our default zero zero right here, and this is so. This is just the 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 jig file. So we need to keep in mind what is this bottom corner right here. So we will have to put that in as our offset when we set up our our new file for this. So th this is here is this is a half inch over in the X, and it's one inch up in the Y, and that just is able to leave a little border or fence, whatever you want to call it, along the edge there. So when I go in to actually make the the board that you see here, this this board, if I wanted to actually put that skills logo on that size board, this is where I would have to now create a new file. And on this one here, we went back to the bottom left corner for our job. The X was 20 inches long for this board. It was five and a half inches tall. But remember, if I leave this at zero, zero, there's a jig in the way. And this is going to cut into the jig. It's going to be off. So what I want to do right here is I actually want to put in an offset. And that offset is going to be 0.5 of an inch over in the X. And see how when I did that, it moved this 0.5 over. And then I take this, and that was 1 inch up in the Y. So now you can see there is an offset built in using the CAD software. So when I hit OK, my actual 00, zero machine 00, zero is right here. And the CAD has an offset of 0.5 and 1, 1.0. And that corresponds directly to this jig being 0.5 of an inch over and 1 inch up. So let's take a look at that out on the shop bot. All right, we're now looking at our control software. And we'll go back to just zeroing out our, off our default proximity switches. So you can type in C3. You can click on the XY routine and all we're doing is going back to using our default because remember this time we changed the offset in the CAD software so what's out here on the shop bot is just your normal operation and here's I put a ball nose in so we can see it a little bit easier and there is our bit centered over that bottom left corner and then this way is easy with the jig you just put the jig in you know line it up I mean you could take this to the next level and even use indexing pins and getting it perfect so that <clears throat> the jig edge is uh, completely running parallel along your x-axis there. But, yep, I just put this in, hold this down, and instead of messing with any offsets right now, it was just done in the CAD software. So there's my 0, 0, and then looking at the board, I'm over my 0.5 and my 1 inch. And that is what we have set right there. So now the student could bring in, create their text, whatever, and then when they go to save this tool path to cut it, the offset is built in right here on the bottom left corner. So there's another method to try. Well, we've looked at changing zeros 
in the CAD software, we looked at changing zeros in the control software. Now let's just look at a couple different type of zeroing things that are out there. So here's an example of a project that we do here at ShopBot for our tr staff training. And what thing is nice about this is we're trying to get through a lot of people on just this one machine. So we have a left side and a right side that we're using. Well, by default, as soon as the cut gets done in the software, your ShopBot always returns back to the bottom left corner, which is your obviously zero zero point. Uh, it's also your default start and finish point. So w what's the first move a lot of us do after we get done cutting? Well, we bring up the keypad and then we move the gantry or the router the spindle out of the way. Well, to make that a pr part of your file that you won't have to do that over on the toolpath side you actually have underneath material setup there's a set function here and there's something here called a home slash start position so what's nice about this is you can give this a different home position now this doesn't change anything to do with zeroing this just has to deal with when the cut is finished it moves the gantry the tip of your bit to whatever position that you type in right here. So if I said, you know, 12 inches over in the X, 12 inches back in the Y uh, on a desktop setup here, this is actually quite nice. So when I do hit OK, it says <clears throat> changing these settings, you do need to recalculate. And I do. I'm OK with calculating, no problem. And just to show you in the preview before we go out on the shop bot, this is what it's doing. So your 0, 0 doesn't change. All we're doing is changing the home slash finish position that the ShopBot moves, which we can now see back here. So you do need to be careful when you're setting this up. You know, if you're setting this up for a position that makes sure that's somewhere on your job size, you know, the size of your ShopBot bed. I wouldn't want to put a 9648 on here and then go out to the ShopBot desktop. So here's what happens. As soon as this gets done cutting with these new settings that we have, it picks up and it goes back to that 1212 that I just programmed it to and it's out of your way so there's no now bringing up the keypad that's now part of your file so that's just the home slash start slash finish position is where it's going to go doesn't change your zero 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 is still down here in the bottom left corner it's just it's a nice feature to get that gantry out of your way when you're done cutting so this next one's a little bit more permanent so let me set the scene here. In our training classroom, we have a few shot bots set up with these jigs in place or these wedges systems. And what happens a lot of times, somebody comes through basic training and you try to teach them about the method we just looked at in VCAR Pro where you add the offset. And a lot of times they forget get to add the offset. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Uh, so you can imagine what's going on here. We're cutting through a lot of these little wooden things. So Here's another example. If this is like a, a permanent fixture or a permanent fence you want to leave on your shop bot and you want to just reset the settings, this is what we're going to do here. So there's your bottom left default corner. Your C3 goes to that corner. What I'm going to show you now here is how to go into the control software and modify this. So here we are in the control software and this one's actually underneath tools and this is going right into where you probably originally set up your shop bot. So we're changing it from just a temporary zero to pretty much now a default zero. So this one's uh, this is why I did this one last because this one's not no, so temporary. You can obviously change it back by going in here but this is where if you wanted to set this up and leave it permanently and not have to worry about, say, students or coworkers or whatever uh, for getting steps. So, again, read all this. takes you through there. Uh, and, again, this is your setup of where you're setting up your actual shop bot. There's your Z0 thickness for your plate. Um, and then right here, this is where we set up using the proximity switches. And I like to do the click here to make it easy on me. And you can see there's your default proximity switch settings which are your negative 0.5 and negative 0.5 on this example on this machine and it says would you like to run your proximity switch setup and it's going to ask me if I'd like to use my keypad and yes I would because on that picture that we just showed you that one was actually having a 1.5 inch over in the X and 1.5 inch whoop, not negative 1.5 one point one point five inch in the Y as well. So now I can click my go to. It moves the shot bot over to that position, 
And now from here, when I exit out, it's going to ask me, would you like to zero your axes, your ax axes here? And when you click yes to this, this is now going to run the new proximity switch routine and save it in the new position. And when you hit OK, now it's going to, it's a bigger distance, but the machine is just calibrating to the new X and Y that you have set up. So there's our new default. So this one wasn't very temporary. You'd have to go back in and change it. But now you could leave it like this. And now that machine can sit like this in our training area. And I don't have to worry about students or new shot botters forgetting about putting on the offsets. And then whenever you see three it now, it goes to that corner as its new default. So try using other portions of your table and get out of that bottom left corner. You can use any part of your table and Move the board to where you want, hold it down, mark it so you know where your zero was for that job. If it's in the middle, if it's on the end, wherever it may be, you've now looked at a few different options in both the CAD software and the control software for setting up those different jigs and fixtures. And most importantly, putting in the proper temporary zero for what you used. At any time, you can bring up the keypad, move the tip of your bit to wherever you want it to be on that table and you can zero out your axes and make whichever ones it is that you move to zero. So you can do that in the, in the control software either using the keypad or up here underneath zero. Which axes would you like to zero? I'd like to zero my X and Y. Bang. And it turns them to zero zero. So that doesn't, this doing it this method you don't have to alter your Another option is in the CAD file. If you're going to use the bottom left corner, you can always add in an offset. Whichever you want for measurements as far as distance in the X and Y, you can go in here and put that offset in and it will move your actual white material background away from your zero zero point. So there's another method. There are other methods and techniques that are out there. Some people use grid systems, some people put a fence along their X and their Y. Um, these are a couple today just to get you started and I'd recommend if you get comfortable with these and you're looking for others, get on shopbottools.com, check out our forum, see what other shopbotters are doing and explore our web pages and see what other information that you can find. So thank you for t joining today's training. It was great always to see you guys here and we look forward to seeing everyone again at the next one.